Welcome back to Camp Witch Doctor one more time for our last video. If you've gotten this far, then your robot is working just like Claudia's here is, and you're ready to either fight it at home or go to a local event. If you're fighting at home, you can make up the rules however you'd like. You can fight along the TV show rules, but if you're going to a local competition, you're going to need to know the rules. There's some websites where you can see what events might be going on near you, and I'll link those in the description below. They'll also be in your build book. You can refer to it there. When you know what event you're going to, you should definitely review the rules and make sure that you know exactly what to expect when you're competing. I went to an event a while back and I recorded video of all the steps you need to know to get through the event. So weigh in because they're going to check your weight, safety inspection, uh, the rules for a match, how you have to line up, the area that you get to work in. So if you're going to your competition for the very first time, you might have a lot of that questions. So take a look at this video, follow along, and you'll know what to expect at your first event. Good luck. It's the morning of the event, and as you can see, the arena is already up. Um, that's because these kind of events don't start when the builders show up. Uh, it actually takes a group of volunteers to set everything up, including the pits, the arena, um, usually the day before or the morning of the event. So whether this is your first event or you've been to a bunch of events, if you want to get more involved and uh, hang out with builders and really have a lot of fun, consider volunteering. The event organizers always need extra help. Uh, it's honestly one of the most fun parts of the events uh, to tear the arena down after, share stories about the uh, fights that happened that day or about your robots. So if you want to get involved and you want to help, uh, ask your event organizers if they need volunteers. Especially for new builders, it's a great way to start getting involved in the community right away and just jumpstart into this great sport. The night before the tournament, Check your email to see if there's any last minute instructions from the event organizer. You'll often get an email with driving directions, check-in information if the competition is part of a larger event, and any other information you may need to know before you get there. You'll also want to double check that you're not forgetting anything important, like your transmitter or even your battery charger. This one may seem obvious, but make sure that you show up to the event on time. It will give you time to get through safety without having to rush and it will give you time to fix any problems with your robot that you might have not expected. As soon as you arrive at the event, find the check-in table and let them know that you're there. You'll fill out any required paperwork there and pay your registration fee. Once you check in, uh, the volunteers will probably point you to the pit area, which will look something like this. You can go ahead and start setting up your pit and getting your robot ready for safety inspections. Ideally, your robot is already finished, and all you need to do is put the battery in your robot. You may be tempted at this point to walk around and check out all the cool robots and talk to the builders, but it's really best to get your safety inspections out of the way first. Once you've passed all your inspections, you can take some time to check out the competition. There may even be some battle bots on display from the TV show. You'll start with your weight inspection. An event volunteer will check the weight of your robot at the official scale. They'll let you remove any safety covers from the robot that shouldn't count towards your weight. If your robot is overweight, you'll have a chance to go back to your pit and make some changes, and then you can weigh in again. Once you pass your weight check, you have to make the line for the functional safety inspection at the arena. If you have a weapon already, the first thing they will check is whether you have an appropriate safety lock for your weapon. Your safety lock should stop your weapon from being dangerous if it unexpectedly powers on. For a spinner, this usually means that it should keep the weapon from spinning. Your safety lock should stay in while you power your robot to make sure that your weapon doesn't move unexpectedly when you turn your robot on. Make sure that your fingers are never near the path of the weapon while you're turning the robot on. Your safety inspector will be watching to make sure that you can turn your robot on and off inside the arena in a safe way. Once the robot is on, you can remove the safety lock from your weapon. Close the arena door, and once your safety inspector says it's okay, you can drive your robot toward the center of the arena. Make sure to never drive your robot or the weapon while the arena door is still open. The safety inspector may ask you to drive your robot around for a few seconds so you can show that your robot works and that you have control of it. Then they'll ask you to drive in a circle and while the robot is still moving, shut off your transmitter. Once you turn the transmitter off, the robot should stop moving on its own. This inspection is done to check the fail safe of your robot. This makes sure that if you lose signal for any reason from the transmitter, your robot will stop moving. If you do have a weapon, you'll have to do the same check for your weapon system. Once you pass this failsafe check, you can turn your robot back on and you'll usually be allowed to practice driving around the arena for a bit, as long as the line isn't too long. This is a good idea to make sure that your robot drives well on the floor of the arena and you can make any changes to help it drive better if you find it necessary. 
The earlier you get through safety inspections, the more likely you'll have time to practice driving in the arena. Getting some practice time driving inside the actual arena is a good idea because you'll get a better feel for the speed of your robot inside the arena, you'll see if you get good grip, and if you have a two-wheel drive robot, you'll see how well the front of your robot can slide on the floor. Then, if you want to make any changes before your first match, you'll have a little time to make modifications. Alright, that's it for your safety inspections. Now you're ready for the tournament. That wasn't so hard, right? Make sure to charge your battery after your safety inspections to be ready for your first battle. The event may have a specific battery charging area for safety reasons, so make sure to check whether you can charge at your pit or if you need to charge your battery at a separate area. Remember to always bring a LiPo bag if you're charging a LiPo battery. Before the official start of the tournament, there's usually a driver's meeting to go over all of the important rules for the day. You will learn what to do if your robot catches fire, where you're allowed to use power tools, what time you'll have lunch break, and any other important details. Pay close attention during the meeting and ask any questions you may have at this point. After the driver's meeting, the event organizer will post a tournament bracket. This may be posted at a TV screen at the event, or they may give you a link to check the bracket online. Take a look to find out who you're going to be battling first. At this point, you may find that you're starting to feel a little nervous. There's likely already a crowd of spectators starting to gather in anticipation of the start of the tournament. And now you're thinking about your first opponent and how that match is going to go. You may find that you feel a little more nervous than you expected. Shaky hands after a match is totally normal and it happens to all of us on the TV show too. Seriously, look closely and you'll probably be able to tell. Just take a deep breath and remember to have fun. Win or lose, you're going to have some great battles. Most local tournaments are double elimination, which means that you will get at least two battles, even if you lose them both. The tournament bracket is made up of a winner's bracket and a loser's bracket. Everyone starts off in the winner's bracket. If you lose a match, you'll get bumped down to the loser's bracket and you'll battle your way through there. Don't be disappointed if you end up in the loser's bracket early. The battles in the loser's bracket tend to be a little bit easier and the final match is always the winner of the winner's bracket versus the winner of the loser's bracket, so you still have a chance to win the entire tournament. When it's time for your first match, a pit runner will likely come tell you it's time to line up for your fight. There's usually a volunteer at the door of the arena who will tell you when to load your robot in and whether you'll be starting in the red square or the blue square. Just place your robot in the arena, turn it on, and remove your safety lock if you have one. Make sure not to drive your robot until all the arena doors are closed. Once the doors are closed, you can drive over to your starting square. You'll hear the announcer ask each driver, are you ready? And then say, this match will begin in three, two, one, fight robots, fight. And your first robot battle is underway. Your robot is gonna get damaged every single fight and repairing your robot is a huge part of the competition experience. Sometimes, you'll only have minor damages. Other times, you may have to collect pieces of your robot from all over the arena. Unlike the TV show, local tournaments usually allow you to tap out of a match if you want the match to end. Tapping out means you will lose the match, but this is useful if you feel you're going to lose the match anyway and you want to limit damage to your robot. If you want to tap out of a match, just tap your hand on the arena wall a few times and the announcer will stop the match. Remember that these tournaments are double elimination, so if this is your first loss, you have a chance to battle again. Don't hesitate to ask other builders for help repairing your robot if you need it. All us robot builders show off our robot battle scars with pride, so take lots of photos so you can show off your battle carnage. Win or lose, it's customary to shake hands with your opponent after the match. It's common to see opponents sharing all the damage that happened to their robots during the fight. Then, it's back to the pits to get ready for your next match. Even if you've been eliminated from the tournament, go back and fix your robot anyway. Events usually have time for grudge matches, so you can walk around and see if anybody wants to battle you just for fun. Events usually also have a rumble in each weight class towards the end of the day, where you can battle against a bunch of robots at once, and then the audience chooses the winner. Grudge matches and rumbles give you a lot of extra practice, and honestly, they can be the most fun part of the event. So that's it. That's our tournament for today. Congratulations to all our winners and to all the builders that were involved. We had a few builders who this was their very first event. So an extra special congratulations to them for making it out and fighting with a working robot. Um, I know that I had a blast. I hope this video helps help you 
uh, figure out what to expect at your first event so you're a little bit less nervous and you feel a little bit more prepared.